I've already stripped and cleaned these synchro units but what I'm going to change, just, to, just because I can, if I can get this bag open the hands are so slippy now with oil, I can't get the damn bag open here we go, we're in, we're in I'm going to change the synchro springs well I've already stripped and cleaned these so we're not too concerned but to change the synchro spring the easiest way is to put a synchro ring in there and that will keep those little teeth those, those uh, selectors in the right place so these are two new ones and we're going to change those springs here's my little screwdriver and we're going to take them out and put them in exactly the same position how's that? Well, that's a bit better isn't it? So, um, make sure that this spring doesn't fly across the room it doesn't look too bad but let's offer it to a new one and see if there's any difference no no it looks good so there's the old one the new one goes in here like that that's easy take this out turn it the other way around synchro around because these have got a little uh, where are you now? there you are these have got a little lip on, a little bend on here which locates in one of the slippers take that out put the new one on and that's that done give it a lube A looby 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 and we'll just move it lightly don't go too wild with it because you'll, you'll lose you'll, it'll jump out and the next thing we're going to do is fit this on and this bit fits <laughs> which I always get this wrong it goes towards the outside uh, yes so let's move the camera again right now we've got all this lubed up we're going to pull that, just pull that ring off temporarily and fit it inside to locate so that our little bits pieces don't jump out and then we're going to fit this, this is the selector ring and this goes to the back of the, the, the outer side of the shaft if you see what I mean like <coughs> transfer case side put that on and drop it down nice select a ring a synchro ring turn it till it lines up again locate those locate those notches and put that down there next thing we're going to get the first gear again inspect all the teeth and this has got a bush inside a bush all right we're going to lube that up Very all nice and then we're going to fit this onto here like that all right next thing goes on here is the bearing so I'll get it all ready but what we can do prior to that we can check our synchro see if it's going to work see not as smooth as a GM <laughs> but that's what it does so these gears are free spinning and when you change gear to first gear it clicks it onto there and locks that to the shaft that's why this synchro hub has got a spline in it so then when you want to change it to third that's locked onto there all right that's easy enough isn't it you could do that you don't need homework on that one and that's it so now we've got to find the bearing. This looks like the one. There are two sort of biggish bearings in here for the main shaft. This is the front one because it's got a groove in here for uh, a snap ring to go in. So this is the bearing. Never take them out of the packet until you're ready to use them. 
So we're going to try and keep the outer race in its packet and put it back in its box. And then we're going to press this, we're going to take it across to the press and press this bearing on. Let me get the press set up because it's in a real Right, so we've got the press set up. We've put our piece of uh, British scaffolding pipe on there, which is an absolute perfect fit for the bearing. And we're going to press it on. There we go. No more than that. There we go. Now we can't lose those gears. Back to the bench. Now we're going to fit the circlip. This can be a bit tricky with these pliers, but these are nice heavy duty ones. There we go. There, lovely. Nice, nice snug fit on there. Perfecto. You know, these were kind of expensive and they do come with a variety of different tips but they do lock so that when you take a circlip off it's not going to go ping right across the room a very handy thing to have the next thing we're going to do is the second gear I hope you all spotted that deliberate mistake because now we're going to fit the third gear not the second gear uh, first, reverse, second this is just like an idler type synchro uh, it, it, it's part of the reverse gear now uh, what we're going to do is again change the springs in this synchro to the good ones we've got the gear here we're going to get ourselves some nice synchro rings and we'll come out the packet again uh, yes we're going to put some oil on the bush on the bearing the needle roller Give it a good old spin around, like that. Some oil on the inside of the gear, spin it around with your finger. Put that on, make sure that the bearing's nice and tight, but not tight, too tight to fit, but it spins around nicely. Next, I shall get on and change these synchro springs. We've already done it, so it's exactly the same. You put your, you, you put your uh, synchro ring underneath so the little slippers don't fall out and uh, just change them off. And if you can see this very clearly, it looks like somebody's been having a hell of a job trying to get this on. You can see it's all been hammered here and here. And this is the way the face up goes. That goes towards your synchro. And it goes on like that somehow. Again, bring your synchro ring up to hold those in place because when you push it down, you just do not want that to come off. In fact, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll lift the bearing up. There we go. And then we'll push that on. There we go. It just does need a bit of a tap, but not Next as thing, much as they did. Your little washer that goes on here. And then we're going to press on that bearing. We'll take that across to the press and do that. Um, yeah, it was a bit tight, was that? But um, hmm, unusually tight. But then again, it could be a bit of bad machining somewhere. Now, once I've pressed this on, it's very important not to really touch it because the synchro can spring off. Very important, you know. Then you've got to take it all to bits again and do it again. Let's be careful. So here we go. I've just got a little five-eighth socket on there. There you go. Make sure all your gears are nice and free. That's nice. And again, don't touch this. There is no way of locking that on because if you lift it up by that, you'll have to start all over again because it'll be springs all over the place. Right, we're going to put this on the bench now and put it away because that's all we can do to this at the moment. When I was uh, looking for the socket, I was using the old bearing as a guide. I don't know if you can, yeah, can you focus in on that? You see how bad that bearing is? See how it's picked up? Dirt. 
See, that's where the, you know, you do get little fragments of um, particles in your gearbox once you've rebuilt them because everybody worries, but it's kind of normal. Um, it's just it's all settling in. So the next thing we're going to do is somehow get the bearings off this lay shaft. Now you're supposed to have a special Land Rover tool. Naturally I haven't got one, but I've got a hammer. That's how we come on. Once again our dismantling tool comes to the rescue because we can get that under there and just don't don't break the end off because it's a bit brittle but we can get under there now to get a little chisel if we've got one probably won't have one Ah, here we are, what's this one? I have a very thin wedge. You know, this is what they say, the thin end of the wedge. This is what I've got. Because I haven't got a puller for these bearings. That's that. Bit more. Another chisel. Hmm. God, all my tools got all my tools got wet the other day with Curtis when he was uh, changing his spring on his car. Right. There we go. really have to make a note to myself to get another one of these crow foot spanners, uh, crow foot bars. They're really handy. Easy. Do the same to this end. And there you go again. Using a little bit of pry bar and thin wedges and stuff like that, we could get that off without damaging it. So now we'll come to fit the bearings. So I didn't show you, but I pressed the bearings back on. It's quite easy. But I, this time I used an inch and a sixteenth socket. Put this one on first and this one on second. The reason for that is because that sits at the bottom. But it doesn't really matter, but I, I prefer to do it like that. So that's those on. The next bearing we've got to fit is a bit of a tricky one again to get off. This one. And then we've got to get that out of there. I've shown you how to do this before. You should know now. But anyway, let's try and get this bearing off in the same method. I don't know if it's going to work or not. <laughs> Using a series of um, dismantling tool and little wedge you know progressively get bigger and bigger and ended up with a little bit of a chisel to go down there I'm now going to use this bearing splitter and the reason I couldn't use it before is that the, the lip on here is quite thick you see where can you see it there the lip on here is quite thick and you can't get a, you can't get under the bearing so Oh, wait a minute, let's do it the other way around, it'll be better. This is a very old tool. There we go. And now we can get under the bearing to push that off. One bearing off. We mustn't try and damage any of the teeth. It's very important when we're taking bearings off. Um, <laughs> they were designed to be pushed on but not taken off. To get the inner race out, well, I'm simply going to get the MIG welder and weld a couple of little beads in here and with a bit of luck it should shrink it when it when it cools it should shrink it and it should drop out <laughs> should eh? famous last words I've got the welder in the other room and, uh, but there's no point showing you how to weld if you don't know well you've seen welding before there we go just be careful if you do this method not to weld it into the housing otherwise you're knackered right so I'll put it in some cold water 
and we've got a little block of hardwood here on the bench. In fact, we'll put the block of hardwood there. Ta da! No fancy tools needed. So you can see, just a few spots of MIG weld, the bearing drops out. How easy was that? Now, because we've been messing about with this and playing around with it, and there's all sorts of dirt and debris in the bottom of there now, I'm going to put this back in the uh, ultrasound. So with the old bearing out and all cleaned up inside, make sure it's all nice, no dirt. It's been in the ultrasound, I don't know if I called it ultrasonic, I can't remember. And now I'm going to press the bearing in and I'll also press the inner race at the same time. Again, pressing bearings on. Pff, when fitting the bearing, you, this is really critical that you push it right down to the bottom. For that I used an inch and an eighth socket, upside down like that, and it's, it's just a nice size so it doesn't damage the race but it, it sits inside the housing because you haven't got much of a lip to push on. Damn them magnets!